Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very special occasion. It's a unique privilege for me to introduce tonight's speaker, the president of our university. And in doing so, kick off the 125th anniversary lecture series on engaged, integrated, um, global Jesuit education in the 21st century. I'm pleased and proud that Father Quinn has chosen to launch the series in collaboration with the Schemmel Forum, named for a fellow Jesuit, George Schemmel. Although I have had many connections with the university over the years, I never had the pleasure of meeting Father Schemmel. I know that he is a legend in the lives of so many who knew him. From all I'm told, he was a creative prob problem solver, a visionary on how things might and can work, a loyal friend, a humble servant, an amusing companion, and a worth worldly appreciator of all things and people. His legacy is alive and well in the lives of everyone he knew, who and, hope, and I hope in the spirit of the Schemmel Forum as well. Father Quinn comes to us with the Jesuit values that, shall we say, come with the turf. He is determined to infuse those values into the institution and all those who are part of it, as they are seen in the context of our increasingly interdependent world. In launching this 125th anniversary series, he will share with us some of the vision of the way the, reverend, the revered traditional values of a Jesuit education play out in the 21st century. Father Quinn has had a distinguished career by any standard. He is a summa cum laude and Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Fordham University with a PhD in jurisprudence and social policy and a JD from the University of California at Berkeley. He was a professor of law at the Georgetown University before moving back to sunny California to teach at Santa Clara and serve as the director of the Ignatian Center for Jesuit Education. Then back to the refreshing chill of the Northeast to serve as president of the University of Scranton. Tonight he will formally launch the 125th anniversary lecture series with a talk on engaged, integrated, global Jesuit education in the 21st century. Please join me in welcoming him. Sandra, thank you very much. It's my privilege to be launching this uh, lecture series uh, in conjunction with the Schemmel Forum, which has contributed so much to our university campus and to uh, the community of the city of Scranton. So thank you. And thank you one and all for being here this evening. In my 2011 inauguration address, I asked, what does it mean to say that Scranton is a 21st century Jesuit university in North America? My answer, the University of Scranton, a Jesuit university, can and should excel in providing its students an education that is engaged, integrated, and global. I suggested then that my understanding of Jesuit higher education was open to revision. This evening, I would like to continue the conversation begun on my inauguration day by presenting further reflections on what makes Jesuit education so distinctive. Into my third year as university president, I remain convinced that we at the University of Scranton are well positioned to read the signs of the times and to see the world with new eyes. Let me first acknowledge the obvious. These are anxious times in the world of higher education. Issues such as cost, quality, access, and accountability provide easy targets for both academic heavyweights and for media talking heads. We can't bury our heads in the sand. In the near future, we will face serious challenges in many ways symbolized by President Obama's recent visit to the Electric City. His remarks 
confirm the seriousness of the larger national debate over the cost and purpose of higher education. Although we often see ourselves as unique and isolated from such challenges, the reality driven home by the President's visit and our smaller entering class this year is that we are not. It is important to us because the general economic picture has already limited our ability to raise tuition and will likely limit us even further. Furthermore, the national debate and the President's recommendations on making higher education more affordable will require of us a variety of responses, most intrusively with regard to ongoing academic assessment, reporting requirements, and financial aid tracking. Given the quality and creativity of our institution, these challenges, while real and serious, need not be understood as negative. Rather, they present an opportunity to re-examine closely our mission and the presumptions and practices which we approach that mission. We will need to be clear on what it means to be a Catholic and Jesuit master's university in these uncertain times. And in so doing, we have an extraordinary opportunity to reimagine the mission of the university, or in the words of Adolfo Nicolás, Superior General of the Society of Jesus, to re-found the universities of the society. Contemporary Jesuit leadership remains vigilant on what is the appropriate starting point for our conversation this evening. And I quote, as we look to the future, we need consciously to be on guard that both the noun university and the adjective Jesuit always remain fully honored. Catholic and Jesuit, descriptors that define us as an institution are not simply two characteristics among many. Rather, they signify our defining character, what makes us uniquely who we are." End quote. The contemporary university, Qua University, is characterized by peer-reviewed research, research-grounded teaching, and teaching as mentoring and service, all within a climate of academic freedom. What universities claim to be teaching their students, specifically to think critically, reason analytically, solve problems, and communicate clearly is necessary, but not sufficient for a Catholic and Jesuit university. For a Catholic and Jesuit university should ask more of its students by educating and forming them to become men and women of faith and of service to their communities. This is the value added of Catholic and Jesuit education. As a Catholic, University then, the University of Scranton remains the home for the conversation that explores and advances the Catholic intellectual tradition. For the Catholic, thinking is a part of believing, and the Catholic view sees no conflict among faith, knowledge, and reason. It looks to how they illuminate one another. At root, the Catholic tradition of inquiry is characterized by an uncompromising commitment to truth, truth that is explored and reverenced in whatever way it discovers itself, as theologian and my friend Michael Buckley has written. That said, permit me as I continue to focus on the category Jesuit rather than Catholic. Historian Stephen Slesher, SJ, is helpful here. For him, Catholic is a genus. Jesuit is a species. The Jesuit species of Catholicism is marked by a strong, perhaps even extreme belief in the compatibility of Christ and culture. This Jesuit accommodation departs from other voices that hold for a strong division, distinction, or even opposition between Christ and culture, between the church and world. 
If Catholicism is a big tent, Jesuits stand somewhere close to the door with at least one foot jutting out into the world. This isn't an aberration or an accident. It's the essential location of Jesuits within the wider institutional church. The University of Scranton is animated by the vision of St. Ignatius Loyola and his first companions. The Society of Jesus is just short of 475 years old and continues to educate young men and women by, by applying insights born of St. Ignatius' spiritual exercises. These insights include the experience of the divine and forgiving love that in turn enables us to recognize our complicity with sin, a personal calling that frees us to embrace our truest passions in following Christ and in service for others, the redemptive possibility of self-giving love that invites us to attend to the cries of those who suffer, the experience of enduring goodness that gives hope for a world in which the spirit always labors. These insights, in turn, shape the Ignatian worldview and inform as organizing principles much of Jesuit education, encouraging students to see the hand of God in all things, to discern the magis, or the better course of action, and to engage the world through a careful analysis of context in dialogue with experience evaluated through reflection for the sake of action and with openness always to evaluation. One of the key phrases capturing the charism of Ignatian spirituality is to love and serve in all things. Here lies the key to Jesuit higher education in the 21st century. For a Jesuit university should ask more of its students by challenging to make Ignatius's charge, his notion of service, their own. Jesuit educators can do this by not shaping just what students know, but who they become. Men and women of adult faith, of competence, for and with others. This is the Jesuit difference. But one might ask how a Jesuit university is to achieve this ultimate learning outcome. What I would like to do here is to expand on my earlier proposition that a distinctively Jesuit education should be engaged, integrated, and global. Jesuit education has engaged mind, heart, and hands since the 16th century when St. Ignatius founded the Society of Jesus. In 2000, Peter Hans Kolvenbach, then Superior General of the Jesuit Order, called for a new Jesuit standard. Tomorrow's whole person, he said, cannot be whole without an educated awareness of society and culture with which to contribute socially, generously, in the real world. For that reason, he ex explained, students must let the gritty reality of this world into their lives so they can learn to feel it, think about it critically, respond to its suffering, and engage in it constructively. They should learn, he said, to perceive, think, judge, choose, and act for the rights of others, especially the disadvantaged and the oppressed. This is the contemporary standard for engaged learning in a Jesuit university. To apply these Jesuit marching orders, students should be encouraged to enter worlds beyond Scranton, to gain an education that no classroom alone can offer, to learn with and from people in marginalized communities, and so to become global citizens for a new century. This educational strategy calls for, a, calls for personal transformation that would lead to transforming society. The ideal of a personal transformation requires a rigorous education to prepare students to become ethical and compassionate leaders who will infuse society with faith and justice 
informed by knowledge. For personal transformation to be effective, academic, moral, and spiritual experience must be integrated with enhanced by learning outside the classroom. But it must be experiential learning in which immersion and reflection on experience are intertwined and focused on the needs and concerns that many in our world face. But there is a catch here, a shift in educational philosophy. It is not just serving others and learning about people but learning with and from people who are often excluded from participation in economic, social, and political life. And further, it integrates academic inquiry, creative imagination, and reflection on experience that inspires fashioning a more just and humane society. Or as Mark Revisa SJ put it so well during a recent campus conference, Integrating accompaniment, spirituality, academic excellence, and community will lead university students to a depth of thought and imagination that are distinguishing marks of the Ignatian tradition. Through these experiences, faculty, staff, community partners, and indigenous people become dynamic partners. In sum, the 21st century Jesuit university should encourage profound engagement with the real, and so commit itself to a pedagogy of active, collaborative, transformative learning about social justice as an integral part of a liberal education. To deliver a transformative education in the Jesuit tradition requires the integration of academic, moral, and spiritual learning, the union of mind, heart, and soul. Our Scranton alumni tell us, and we know from our own experience, that college is a time of profound change and formative encounters with ideas and authors to be sure, but more. We know the heart of a transformational educational experience also includes encounters with professors and mentors, roommates and teammates, coaches and directors, and, any, and many other members of the university community who shape and form our students in the gradual but steady process of moving from late adolescence into young adulthood. But again, much more. We also know that any university that claims, as we surely do, to educate and form the whole person cannot pretend that the religious life of that person is somehow an optional or accidental dimension that can be relegated to the sidelines or attended to as an afterthought. Rather, the experience of a Jesuit education can and should provide our students with the tools and opportunities to develop the habits of mind and heart that will enable them to encounter the living God. Only in this most important of all encounters will our students discover the truth about themselves as well as the meaning and implication of the call that comes with being a human being. In the words of Georgetown Jesuits reflecting on undergraduate education at Georgetown, quote, the journey of selfhood should also ideally include the cultivation of a freedom to choose our truest selves, end quote. Promoting this project of self-discovery and discerning one's deepest vocation is consistent with our university vision to provide a, transfer, a superior transformational learning experience, preparing students who will set the world on fire. The task of providing these tools and opportunities is not the job of any single office or division of the university. Rather, this task is the focus of our entire university community and is arguably a raison d'etre as a Jesuit university. So, Jesuit universities in the 21st century should be about student formation. Jesuit schools have long had a keen interest 
informative concerns, and in the ways such concerns intersect academic work. Robust collaboration between academic and student affairs with the continued vitality of general education on Jesuit campuses highlight this concern for formation among undergraduates. As we educate students, we aim to invite them into a broader form formational experience that will enable them to grow into human beings of a certain kind, blessed with gifts of mind, heart, and soul. It is this human formation that provides the context within which our students' education takes its proper perspective, its deeper purpose, and its true meaning. John Donne got it right. No man is an island. We are all, as he said, involved in mankind. But we in Jesuit universities say more. We are responsible for humankind. As Pope John Paul II insisted, we are all really responsible for all. Our vision draws us always outward in a widening circle of knowledge and understanding, compassion and responsibility. Our curiosity, concern and commitment must stretch to include all humanity. This stretching should be the part of any university's core vocation, or at least of any Jesuit university. Catholic teaching on solidarity is clear. We are one human family. We are our brothers and sisters keepers, wherever they may be. Loving our neighbor has global dimensions in a shrinking or more fashionably put globalizing world. So my claim that Jesuit education should be global education remains a simple one. Call our students the global generation. And so we need to encourage them to think locally, regionally, nationally, internationally, and globally in whatever they study. Providing greater opportunity for international study, increasing diversity on campus, and expanding multicultural cultural experiences for our community, combined with ongoing critical reflection, would help our students think globally in a responsible manner. As a university community, we gather to create new knowledge, to expand understanding by engaging in teaching and learning, and to promote the public good. But our living tradition at the University of Scranton calls us deeper to do more. Make no mistake, the students who show up on our campus every fall, filling our residence halls and classroom with energy, our work and teaching with meaning, are first and foremost children of God. They are created out of love, called to love, and destined to love. It is our job to help them recognize that truth about themselves, and further to help them tease out its implications for the lives that they will lead as citizens, husbands and wives, parents, and as friends. We can achieve this education, we can achieve this with an education that is engaged, integrated, and global. This is the Jesuit difference, and the real measure of our Jesuit universities will lie in who our students become. Thank you. Father Quinn is kind enough to uh, have agreed to take a few questions. And since I have the mic, I'll take the prerogative of asking the first one. Um, it's about setting the world on fire. Uh, it seems as though, I know you don't mean that as a pyromaniac. <laughs> um, the new pope seems to be setting the world on fire. And I just wonder if you have any insights or comments on 
him and what his, uh, what his time in this position might mean to you and to us. The presidents of the Jes uh, 28 Jesuit universities met a couple weeks ago in Chicago, actually with the father, our superior general of the Jesuit order, and also with our, um, the chairs of our boards of trustees, and particularly the chairs um, were quite intrigued by the same question. And the president's answer was, as true CEOs, we intend to leverage it to the max. Uh, so we're, we're constantly advertising the new pope is a Jesuit pope. Uh, we do see a, a way of proceeding which is refreshingly different. And uh, uh, I'll lay claim to it, arguably Jesuit. Um, of course, we're waiting uh, as, with bated breaths for some serious decisions. Uh, but uh, style and uh, how he presents himself are very important. Um, so um, we're going to ride that wave as Jesuit universities. Question? Um, yeah. Len. I, I was glad to hear you emphasize the fact that at a Jesuit university, we should be encouraging our students to concern themselves, as you said, uh, and to work for the rights of others, especially the disadvantaged and the oppressed. I think it's very clear that we're living at a rather critical time in the society right now, where the question has come to the fore as to the nature of our obligations to others, whether it's in the form of uh, health care, or whether it's in the form of food subsidies, or uh, some other form. It's, it's taken on a very political task to be concerned with others, to be concerned with the oppressed, to be concerned with the disadvantaged. What role do you see Catholic Jesuit education playing in the political realm where these things can be influenced? Well, I would, uh, I would say, um, my, uh, thank you for that question. It's a challenging one. First and foremost, as educators, I think uh, we need to educate our students as to these issues so they can uh, go forth and proclaim the good news. Politically, as institutions, uh, uh, we do have something to say. And to uh, just give you one concrete example, uh, Jesuit universities um, met in February in Washington, D.C. to prevent findings about the following quite important issue, higher education for undocumented students in the United States, and the role that a Jesuit and private institutions, but particularly Jesuit institutions, uh, can do. Uh, and there was a, a, an extensive uh, survey study um, integration of Jesuit, uh, excuse me, of Catholic social teaching, uh, basically uh, reinforcing the claim that we are to uh, love our neighbors um, and to uh, care for the alien. Uh, so that would be one concrete example of uh, a Jesuit presence in the capital in February during the heat of a political uh, debate over uh, comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, stating a position which, of course, is a political position, uh, but based in uh, gospel values. So that, that would be one concrete example. Uh, other questions? Please. Oh, Mike. Father, does the, uh, my name is Tim Magnavine. I'm a faculty member at a community college in Bucks County. Does this university have a requirement for community service for graduation of their student, undergraduate students? It doesn't have a requirement, although the statistics uh, suggest that an overwhelming number of our students do community service. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Pat Vaccaro is here, but um, she could attest to that. But we don't, we don't have a, um, a sort of a, a, we don't have a graduation requirement. Yes, Father, how does a Catholic Jesuit institution include within its program students who enroll, are enrolled who are not Catholic, maybe not Christians, and maybe not even faith believers? Sure. You know, that, that is a very challenging question, and I appreciate it from you. <laughs> um, I think um, 
The, the Vatican, uh, Vatican II really explained to us how uh, a, a Catholic university can be truly a Catholic university, uh, proud of its uh, Catholic intellectual tradition, while at the same time being um, open to uh, individuals of, of different faiths and also those with no faith. So um, that's always a, a delicate dance, I believe. Um, but I, I think um, at Jesuit universities, we've done it relatively well. So we appreciate the, the voices of other uh, denominations, other faiths, uh, but we are also true to our, our Catholic traditions and particularly our intellectual tradition. Everybody just wants to go to the reception. I like that. Please. Father, as you sketch the various aspects of the Jesuit tradition that would influence how our students go forth, um, one of the recent discoveries I've had in learning about the Jesuit tradition is the importance of openness to the spirit within the Christian tradition. And I know that that's difficult to, to quantify, to, to build into uh, organizational objectives, uh, but I have become increasingly aware of the importance of that openness to the spirit as an operational Jesuit principle. Sure. Do you see ways in which that could be uh, nurtured and encouraged yeah. on campus? Uh, I first would agree wholeheartedly that part of the Jesuit tradition is open to the spirit or to the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I, I think um, one way of proceeding to at least address that issue would be um, under the rubric of Ignatian discernment. Um, Ignatius taught his, um, his early um, followers and then uh, we who are um, descendants of that tradition, um, it has been introduced to us and I trust that maybe we know something about it, uh, that we could cultivate a certain um, spirit of discernment, which is to discern the movements of the spirit in one's personal life, and arguably uh, you could translate that into some form of communal discernment um, as to where the spirit is moving an institution such as the University of Scranton, uh, and both where it should move and where it might be moving, but inappropriately so, and redirected. Uh, but that would be, um, that's not something that would happen overnight. But I, I, I do believe that among our undergraduates who um, uh, particularly uh, you know, are up at Chapman Lake every weekend, um, the art of discernment is being presented to them under various guises. Well, we thank you so much. Great, it's thank you, honor thank you. Thanks. Please, please join us for a reception in the ballroom, I believe. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.